taken me a while to get this video together. I actually filmed the first part of this video, which you'll see after this, so the second part of this video technically, before Christmas, about a week before Christmas. Um, and then I had every intention of getting it out before Christmas, I was going to get it out before New Year, I think I even say that in the video. Um, and here I am, sat here on the 15th of January, <laughs> so I didn't get that done. But it's been a really hectic um, time. But um, actually a little fun fact for you, today I would have been sitting my driving test. Um, I was supposed to have my driving test on the 15th of January, but I was told when I had the brain radiotherapy that I wasn't allowed to drive for a year. So I've actually had to postpone that, I've moved it until June. But I'm, obviously I still won't be able to take it in June, and by the time I get around to being able to drive again and take the test, I'll probably have to have some refresher lessons anyway. So yeah, I would be, I think, what's the time? I would have, I would know if I'd passed or failed by now, so yeah. That's a bit of a shame. Um, but yeah, so what was I gonna say? Yes, so I filmed that, that part of the video. I thought I'd better update because it's been about two and a half weeks. So you can tell my voice isn't too good and it's worse in the other bit of the video because my voice went. I've shouted for my youngest at school and my voice just totally went. And then um, I, we thought it was, I, I thought it was a cold and it went on and it went on for a few weeks and a few people in my family were getting a bit worried and so I said, maybe you should get it checked. And when I spoke to, um, a lady at Guy's Hospital, she said, actually, that could be a side effect. Well, it will be a side effect of the brain radiotherapy. Um, it can affect your vocal cords. Sometimes they don't go back to normal, and sometimes the side effects can last for up to a year. So um, I'd had a phone call. I had my, I've had my still got my braids in the other part of the video as well, so I look totally different now. Um, I, sadly, I had to take them out. They've been in for eight weeks. I'd left them in as long as I could, but yeah, so I'm back to the, the short hair. Um, but yeah, so I, the lady from Guy's Hospital phoned, and I mentioned that in the second part of the video, and she said, have you had any hair loss? And at the time I hadn't, she said, well, you'd notice if you had. And then, lo and behold, the next week, I thought, ooh, I had this weird tingling feeling on the back of my head. And when I lost my hair through chemotherapy, so anyone that's had chemotherapy and lost their hair, or radiotherapy and lost their hair, they know that kind of, it's like a cold, tingling kind of feeling. And then I rubbed the back of my head, and there was just all these little short hairs, just because I'd had the, the back of it, um... Oh gosh, what's it called? Undercuts. I had it undercut before I had the operation in October. Um, and yes, yeah, so and I've got a little, I'll show you because it wasn't there before. I've got a ball pad, I don't know if you can see that very well. So it goes right around, you can pretty much see where they lasered my head. <laughs> Sorry, I just not the camera. Um, where they lasered my head. Um, so if you're new to the channel and you don't know what's been going on, you can go back and watch my other videos. I had a brain tumor removed in October last year and I had um, stereotactic radiotherapy in November um, last year. So, and then it's been an ongoing thing. Before that, I had some chemotherapy, radiotherapy, all sorts of, I've had it all so far. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so I thought I'd just come back on an update. So I've had a really sore throat, very dry throat, um, lost my voice. It's a lot better now than it was. Sometimes it's a bit of a struggle to talk and I tend to find that towards the end of the day, it's worse than in the morning. I wake up, my voice almost sounds normal in the morning. But after answering a million questions to my kids asking me, you know, how long it take to walk to the moon and all sorts of crazy things that kids ask you. Um, by the time I've even done the morning school run, my voice is gone. Um, so yeah, but now I'm feeling good. Um, so I'll go, I'll just, I'll leave this bit now and I'll put the other bit of the video on. So this is, so we're going from now, which is the 15th of January, we're going back to, I can't remember what the day was, but it was the week before Christmas, because it was just before the kids broke up, because I wanted to video it before the kids broke up, and they broke up on the 20th, so it might have been the 19th or 20th of December. So let's go back in time. <laughs> Hello. So I thought I'd do a quick update video. It's been quite a while. You have to bear with me, because my voice has gone. Um, I've had a cold like every man and his dog has. Um, so from the last video, I'd just had the tumour removed, and then I'd come back on the early hours of the Saturday morning, um, so on the Monday or the Tuesday, I can't remember which day, I had a phone call from someone at the hospital and she'd called up just to let me know that the, one of the scans that I'd had while I was in the hospital had showed that they hadn't managed to actually get all of the tumour. So while it had been a very successful brain operation and they were still very pleased with how it had gone, um, they hadn't managed to get all of the tumour and there was some residual tumour left in there, um, which they decided they were going to do some um, stereotactic brain radiotherapy on. Um, which I already knew I was going to have some radiotherapy, but they actually upped it from one day to three days, um, so they could target specifically target those areas. Um, 
I was a little bit shocked to begin with because I'd kind of assumed from when they said it had been for successful and really good that they'd actually managed to get all of it. But um, she did say to me that if they'd gone any deeper and sort of taken more out, then I was verging on the edge of um, risking becoming a vegetable or, you know, having some like neurological issues from the um, operation, which is obviously not what I wanted. So, you know, it was the best solution in the end. So, yeah. So then they booked me in to go in to have a mask fitting for the radiotherapy because the stereotactive brain radiotherapy is a lot more stereotactive radiotherapy in general. I think you can have it in other areas, but I don't know. Um, it's very specific to, you know, other other external beam radiotherapy. So they're really targeting the specific area. Obviously with the brain, they've got to be really careful. They don't accidentally get bits of healthy tissue um, because that could be, or then that could cause neurological issues too. So I went in to have the mask fitting and on that actual occasion, I couldn't actually have the mask fitting um, because they said about the clip in my brain. I'd had a clip, I've got a clip in one of my, um, gosh, in one of my, my arteries in my brain because I think it was, a, it was a, there was a risk of it bleeding. So they put a clip in, but they couldn't guarantee that it wasn't metal. So they couldn't do the um, scan, um, the MRI scan to see whether I was, to, to look at the area basically. So on that day, they couldn't, they couldn't do the, the mask fitting. Um, so I went in another day to have the mask fitting. I'm going to show you the mask now. This is the mask. So basically, this goes over your face. You're laying on a bed, so I'll be laying down. And then this goes over you. And then the, you're laying on the bed. And then these bits clip into the, the bed. And then it holds you down, basically. So it sort of fits on. Like so. And then hold it to you. Close. And then you're laying down. I know, it is so tight when it's on you. It is so, so tight. And then one day they put it on me and I actually had a full, I'll, put, I'll insert a picture, it's quite funny. I had a whole strip of these little dots all over my head, forehead and I was at the train station waiting to go home and uh, it's at London Bridge and um, oh my God, everyone was staring at me like, what is that on that girl's forehead? Because I looked a bit like an alien and I had some like, weird growth coming out of my head. It was really Anyway, so on the 23rd, 24th and 27th, I had three brain radiotherapies of the stereotactic brain radiotherapy. And the thing that was different about this that I noticed was when I've had radiotherapy in other areas is one blast, and you might have that over 10 days. You might have 10 blasts over, over 10 days. This time, it would do one blast, then it would do more pictures, and then it would do another blast, then it would do more pictures. So I had nine blasts over three days, which was just seemed a little bit more intense to me. And then I was in the mask on one occasion for 55 minutes because they were being very, they got, they've got to be very specific about, they take the images so then they, they move the bed and move things to make sure they're getting the right bed. So that was quite intense. I think the shortest one out of all of them was 40 minutes, which still seems like a very long time. I had to, I counted in my head, that's how I got through it. I counted in my head and tried to, to breathe. <laughs> it's, it's quite, um, it's quite an intense experience. And um, since then I've had some, some side effects, I've had some headaches, my jaw really hurts, a lot of jaw swelling, um, my teeth hurt, but some of my teeth have come a bit loose, which was quite, yeah, I did say this to the lady she phoned last week. See, this all seems like it was such a long time ago, and it actually wasn't that long ago, um, and I said this to her, and, and she didn't seem phased, so she didn't seem seem bothered. She said if the headaches continue, then I need to get back onto them, but other than that, she didn't seem bothered by the loose teeth and the jaw pain, so... I'm not bothered if she's not bothered. Um, it's all subsiding a bit now. I'm feeling a lot better. As I said, I've had a bit of a cold. My voice has gone. <clears throat> but yeah, it's just, it's been quite a busy time. I kept meaning to do a video and there's been nativity plays and there's been all sorts of things going on, getting ready for Christmas and school things going on with the kids. So I just thought I'd jump on and do a quick update because I know it's been a while and then I thought by the time I actually get one done, it's going to be 2024. So <laughs> I was leaving it a little bit long. But yeah, I hope everyone's cool and everyone's... Um, yeah, everyone's all right and everyone's having a good time. And um, yeah, there's any questions? I know this is a bit short. I've, to be honest, I've no, I only realised when I've sat down to do this video how scatty my brain has got. Because I thought of all these things the other day. Oh, I'll mention this and I'll mention that and I need to talk about this and I'll talk about that. And actually, I've sat down to do it and I've just, I should have written a list. Really. I've got my calendar so I can remember what days <laughs> the brain radiotherapy was on. But um, if you've got any questions or you want to know anything, then um, put a comment down below and I'll get back to you. Um, yeah, from now I've got the, um, it was 
King's College Hospital. No, it wasn't. That's where I went for the surgery. It's Guy's Hospital. Guy's Hospital that I went to for the radiotherapy, which is the London Bridge. Um, it's just so easy to get to on the train. You literally come out of London Bridge Station and it's right in front of you. And they've got their very own cancer centre. So I went in there and had that done. Um, and they're amazing, really lovely people. So yeah, again, love, another lovely experience with lovely staff. Um, <clears throat> so from now on the 5th of January, I've got them calling me just to double check that everything's still okay, that the headaches have gone and that sort of thing. And then I've got a telephone consultation on the 8th of January with my consultant um, to just discuss how everything's gone and I think to maybe discuss the node and, and take it from there. I think I'm due to have a uh, a scan to see how this has gone it'll be three months after the radiotherapy which I think works out in February end of January February I'm not sure sometime around then so yeah so when I know a bit more and I'll update you I hope everyone has a good festive time and I will if I don't speak to you before I don't do another video before then then I will speak to you in 2024